Today's scripture comes from Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 46. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in a heavenly glory. All the separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on the right and the goats on His left. Then the king will say to the father, Take your inheritance and the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Lord, when did we do see you hungry and feed you and thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a strange clothe you? When did we... When did we see you sick in a prison or go to visit you? The king replied, At the least of these brothers of mine you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, I will prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave nothing to drink. I was asleep to clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and you in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, and or in prison, and did not help you. And he will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. They will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Amen. Today we have a new guest, uh, we have a guest speaker, uh, Kim, missionary Kim, who is serving in Hungary. So as he comes up, please let's give them a round well welcome. Uh, before the sermon, we're going to be seeing a uh, clip of, of the mission, Here's him serving in the mission over there. So this morning, before I came to church, as I was praying, I was anticipating and I was so excited. I was so excited thinking. And because I've met you guys now, I am so thankful and so happy. You know, missionary. And you know, not only are you allowing me to just come visit you, but you've, um, you know, allowed me to share the message and the gospel before you got your congregation here. So I thank the pastor, Lee, and I thank you guys. So today, this scripture, uh, the message comes from, you know, talks of, is going to be about Jesus and the work to deliver Jesus um, to the cross the world. And I praise Christ, it is only Him that He will come into our heart and to deliver that message to us, to us, and that we will become changed, we will become new. And how much that has been done through the work of God in Hungary, where I am serving. You know, last couple of nights I spent the night in Jama. Uh, which is the place in Tyler, you know, there is the pastor there, there is the elder there, you know, in Lindale, right two hours from here. So we were, you know, driving around the city of Lindale, and as we were driving around, it's a small town, but we were driving around and praying for this place. And even though it's a small place, you know, we were so excited we were so blessed to see this place that a bible belt right the texas this land that god has chosen to to send so many people who love god and serve god and especially we came, I came here now and especially in the center of this bible belt is kcumc united methodist central united methodist church in the center of the bible belt that you guys are here gathered to that you know in the past 30 years I've been praying in prayer in my knees but starting this I started having bad arthritis in my knees so the so the doctor told me not to you know kneel down to pray down and to 
um, pray. But this morning, as I was praying this morning, you know, I was so sincere, and then it got to my knees again. That is that sincerity, and because I was so sincere to meet you guys today. And this is the gospel. You know, in Isaiah chapter 40, you know, the God has uh, prepared the way for you and in whatever the circumstances that you will worship Him. And I was w reflecting on that word. And then in today's scripture, chapter 4, And we mentioned about all the blessings in the heavens. You know, when that blessing is birth in this place, that's when Jesus will return again. That's what it says. And I shared this. We do in different places. It is a true reflection of knowing this word, the truth that God says, and to fulfill that. Um, for, came to this KCUMC when I visited you guys I immediately felt that vibe of energy that brought me here that energy that you guys are ready and I was so thankful to see that are preparing and praying for the missions and for the missionaries out there you know, despite the fact that you guys are not there, that you are sincerely praying for the people who are serving outside of this place. You know, no matter how good, how much effort a missionary is serving in their given places, without the support of the prayer, such as the prayers from this church or elsewhere, you know, they would not be, we would not be anything. We would not be able to do any of God's work without the prayer support. Because I know I am weak, I fall short, but because I stand, but I know I stand here and able to do what I do for the glory of God because of the prayers that you guys do for the missions. You know, I reflect on serve the Hungarian people in their streets. And I and more and more I realized that to encounter Jesus. That's what mission is. Mission is encountering Jesus. You know, if you look at today's scripture, you know, verses one to thirteen, you know, it kinda talks about the parable of the ten virgins. You guys all know about that, heard about that, you know, there's or wise virgins, and then there's five not wise virgins. The five who are wise, they had prepared their lamp with extra oil to burn. But the other five who were not wise, they did not carry that extra oil. In, in verse 5, the bride, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Verse 5 is It wasn't about you know who are the smart grooms, um, bridegroom who you know who are wise. They stayed up and it wasn't that. It is all of those bridegrooms had fall asleep. Of our appearance, you know, sometimes we're not always ready and we're always falling asleep. And then in verse 14, you know, this parable is about the talents, right? So one person gets one talent, one person gets two talent, one person to the servants, right? And then when the master returns, the person who had the five talent, you know, he worked and he does after he worked hard endlessly. And so he, you know, made five more talents for a total of two and master commended him because he has worked hard and so he said well done good and faithful servant so and he gave and gave more to do and then it's the same thing with the, the servant that had two talents who worked hard and made it into four talents so the master says again to him you good and faithful and uh, good and faithful servant you know well done 
and I'm going to give you more to continue to work in master's happiness. Um, and so he did that. But the person, man who got only one talent, you know, he had hidden that one talent in the ground. Uh, and then he dug it up when the master returned. And what did the master say? The master says, you wicked, lazy servant. You know, and then he criticizes. Now, at least what he could have done, he's collected the interest. And yet, he was so lazy, he just put it into the ground and didn't do anything and forgot about it. As I was serving in the streets of the Hungarian people, I would, you know, share about this story. And then I would, that the, the master, you know, give you. And then Paul, uh, Bal, he asked, he, uh, how many talents did you get? Did you receive? And then I was sort of held for 15 seconds and then I and then I replenished but in the next upcoming short days I believe that God will provide me with five talents that word you know I realize you know the more you're ready the more you'll be able to do is that you have to be more eager you have to be You know, because you've been given a, you know, whether it's, you know, whether um, it's a small amount, you know, despite the small thing, because you were thankful and because you worked hard, you know, you were able to make more. And that's why God will plan to give you more work with more blessing and the smaller you can do that at a bigger field. But perhaps maybe God even um, had more interest in the person. And it's not about how much I get in the get-go, you know, five talent versus two talent. But even when you get one talent, you know, maybe God had even more uh, expectations so that they could be able to work hard even the, in the small circumstances. And that, you know, so that that task, then next step, they'll be able to give you more and give you more blessing, more blessing that you could even handle, you know. Yeah, master starts off with one talent. Master doesn't automatically give you, you know, five talent to begin with. And you have to be able to handle that one talent to be able to handle the two talents. You know, master will start you with one talent. So let me ask you, how many talents did God prepare for you to begin? You know, when I went to Hungary as a missionary, you know, I when I was first called to go to Hungary, um, you know, in the beginning, as I was called to be a mission, you know, I was, I was, I didn't know exactly where I'll go or how I'll go, when I'll go. As I was reflecting on the scripture, and I was reading on the story of when Paul, um, you know, after when he was getting ready to go to Asia, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you know, Paul was was a God's messenger. He was preparing to do God's work in Asia, but yet Holy Spirit that direction. You know, what would have gone through his mind? But as he was uh, sort of thinking about it, a dream, at the, at the vision of the, he receives a vision that says to come to Macedonia. You know, God says it's a vision that he gave to Paul, Jesus Christ. Our life has changed. Right, we were going in one direction, and it has completely changed our direction to a different place. Christ, it is the same thing. If you've received two talents, um, you know, after the the God has given him the vision to head toward Macedonia, as he went over there, he heard. So, like, you know, even as a missionary, you may plan on something to do for God but if God has a different plan for you the division or whatever it is and he will lead you to that other path and for me when God has called me a mission and he had led me his path to Hungary and I received it and I was obedient to that you know as to us it gives us a certain specific message you know, as I reflect on the scripture more and more, there's care. 
between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, you can reflect on today's scripture. We see, you know, that they left and right. But even even in the Old Testament, right? They also gave the the sheep and the goat as in see that. But in Second Chronicle, I think it's in chapter fifteen. You know, a lot of the kings have made the idols out of the goat. And that goat, you know, represent a false god. But in this, but in, anyway, in this scripture, they also split the goat and the sheep left and right. And then they ask, and he asks a question, you know, when I was hungry, you gave me something to drink, something to eat. When I was stranger, you gave me a place to stay, gave me the clothes to wear. When I was in prison, you came and helped me. You know, what this is, is today's message, how we encounter Jesus, how we serve Jesus. You know, and then the people on the other, uh, even these people says, you know, when were you ever actually thirsty or hungry or in prison? You know, when Jesus, or, you know, whatever you did for other, other fellow people, you know, that's what you've done for me. That's what Jesus says. You know, in the place that I serve in Budapest in Hungary, you know, there's a lot of that actually, you know, shares uh, free meals and breads in different churches that they, they do that. But there are something special about us. You know, we, you know, our purpose of giving clothes or giving food of 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 our serving. You know, it doesn't end there. You know, for us, the point is wherever we are, whatever where we're praising, and uh, we happen to be wherever we're worshiping, and if there happen to be people who are hungry, we give the food, we give the clothes. That street is the church. That is the street ministry. And I know... It's not because it's not because I am a special person. I don't want you to I want you to kind of think listen to my story. You know there was one winter when we were one day praising and worshiping the Lord in the street. when it was snowing you know as we were moving the food from the van you know there was not that many people in uh, the place to help us out and we had to go to the basement of this specific place and because of all that snow you know that basement was all filled up and the stairs you know was all slippery and as I was walking down the stairs and I was slipping because of all those snow and while I was carrying the you know the sort of the rice cooker or whatever all those food in my hand you know as I was slipping through the snow you know I remembered thinking you know if I let go of this you know these people who are hungry may not be able to eat this food you know so thankfully God did not you know make me that hurt uh, so we were able to serve these people with the food that was not you know falling into the grounds you know that my point is, you know, God gives you that heart. God gives you that heart of serving. We were, um, you know, when we were weak and didn't have anything, Jesus came and did that for us. You know, in this, in my mission field, you know, we stayed in the in a like sort of like a dormitory place in the second floor. And also we allow the people the from the homeless people to come up to that area so that whatever it is that they need. You know, we open that space for them. You know, why do we do that? It's because Jesus first came and did that for us. God provided for us. When we were weak, God gave us strength. When we were poor, God gave us uh things to feed on. You know, when I first went to the mission trip, you know, we were 
um, you know, we didn't have a lot of possessions, and especially these people in the homeless who are homeless, who are, you know, alcoholics, who don't have clothes, you know, all these things, you know, we would bring them to our van and close them, and, and that one day, you know, it was extremely cold in the winter, you know, I know I, that, and I was so afraid to, you know, get me a thick, big jacket so I could serve. You know, when I went to the street, you know, when it suddenly became so cold, shivering, you know, in the streets. You know, at that time I prayed, Lord, you know, before they are able to be, you know, wear my clothes. So I gave my big, thick jacket to the homeless people. And I said, you know, before these people are with, you know, even that is a heart that God has given to me. You know, one day for a worship uh, in the street again. You know, one day, and then randomly there was this one car that, you know, drove by. A random car. And then this guy, you know, starts taking stuff out from this trunk of the car. And then it was basically these people from... Um, China, you know, they brought all these extra jackets, like 50, you know, they, they brought like 600 pairs of socks and all these stuff. And then they started sharing and, you know, I was so touched and I was so thrilled, you know, and as I've received that and we shared that with the homeless people and, to sh and spread those things, you know, I was so touched because God works so mysteriously. You know, when God gives you the heart to serve, you know, God will fulfill that. You know, when Jesus was unclothed and you have clothed me, these words of the scripture is truly reflected in our everyday life. And it truly happens when we fix people, when we serve those who are less fortunate than us. You know, and yet we are able to serve them despite the lacking of God still fills that and only gives that heart and we're more thankful and gra grateful because the Holy Spirit moves to be gratified uh, through those actions. Old Testament and New Testament, there's always a pair. You know, I came to Hungary after looking at the teen. You know, that direction, getting that direction to go to Hungary is one talent that God has given to me. And as I was looking through all my life, all those experiences, you know, my second talent, I, I used to work as a staff um, in a KCCC, which is a Korean Christian Crusade for Christ college group. So initially, I was sent to Hungary as a college ministry group. Um, initially, so each um, you know end of the year, I always go to a retreat. You know, at where we fast and we and at that time, I was praying. You know, with our college ministry students, and I went to that retreat, chapter fifty-eight. You know, at that time I was broken down. At that time I thought I was a very holy person. I thought mature and holy. You know, I was fasting and I was praying. But at that time, what well, God broke me apart through the message in Isaiah 58. Because it tells us you know, what you need to be doing is clothing those people who those who are not clothed, feeding those people who are not fed, helping those people who are blind. You know, those are the, that's the message that God has given to me in year 2005 on the first day, January 1st. So when God gave me that message, I went to Budapest and, you know, picked up my food and material, whatever I had, to serve the people that were lacking, who had much less than I did. You know, that was the second talent that God has given to me. You know, 
giving me a direction where to go to Hungary and giving me the specifics of um, you know of the message I was questioning what exactly is the specifics how am I going to be serving you know at that time I did not know if this is a fast but yet I was still doing it you know as I was serving in the as a missionary but one day I realized in the morning prayer came and said you know You know, as I was thinking to myself, you know, I have one pair of clothes and if I needed to give it to a homeless person, then I have to undress mine to give. If I only have one room person, then I don't even have a room to sleep my own. You know, when I was hungry, you fed. When I was homeless or, or stranger, you provided me with a place and clothed me. And that's what the scripture says. You know, in Hungary, where I serve in the street, you know, these are people, you know, starting their 12 years old. You know, alcoholics. You know, it is not easy. The type of things you see in the streets. As you're serving daily day, you know, as I see the changes in their spirit, in their mind, the small changes that come before the Lord, they change their ways and come and confess before the Lord, that there is no, nothing, nothing but excitement that you get when people turn around from their old ways and look to Jesus and accept Jesus. And that's only possible, not because of my work but it's because of the people here in this church and elsewhere that are praying for me and lifting this uh, mission groups this is all possible and that's why I was so excited to be here and to meet you guys and I am so thrilled to be standing here to have been having met you You know, it is not about you know, doing and then you get the faith or because you have the faith you get to do. You know, it is a simultaneous thing. You know, because, you know, God, Jesus says. Jesus says, if you clothe me, if you gave it to the ones who are not uh, who doesn't have, if you uh, help the person who's a stranger, if you visited somebody, you know, that's the doing the same thing to Jesus Christ. But if you did not do that, then you have the least of the mind of Jesus. You know, another story I want to share with you, you know, in the street as we are, um, you know, help, you know, oftentimes the police looks after us and now what I'm trying to say the bottom line is you know it is that it is serving the of you know serving these people as our own you know that is serving Jesus that is meeting Jesus that is what I wanted to just deliver to you guys today at this time I just want you to pray for a minute of how we can meet encounter Jesus around us thank you so much because you have called us your own and you have called us to go to the ends of the earth to so much all these things in the name of Jesus we pray amen